hardcore debates, which I can't join. Does everybody here agree that Hamas by design is trying to maximize civilian casualties? Do we all agree with that or no? Because it's a ridiculous analogy and you keep, you've made like three of them so far. I'm curious what, if you have any idea why or if you are truly thinking these are good analogies. I'm just curious what you'll say. If, I, if I'm going to reject the analogy, why would you think I would reject any of these analogies? Well, I think you're probably going to reject the analogy because you're going to say that the... Uh, no, the, not even close. Not really what I'm no. going to say okay. is... Because they no longer wanted Hamas to run it. Because why? But the point is... The point is... It's wait, no, no, wait. Why didn't they want Hamas to run it? I, I'm sorry. Do we want to go through the history again? It was because Hamas concept. was a terrorist was a organization that was born and, and, and attacking wait, Israel. So wait, yes, wait, that's wait, the whole okay, point. So wait, hold on. 2014, 2014, <clears throat> did Hamas agree to renounce violence? What is this? I was speaking to a hostage negotiator this morning. He made the comparison between the 50 hostages, hostages that Hamas has promised um, promised to release, as opposed to the 150 prisoners that are Palestinians that Israel has said that it will release. And he made the comp comparison between the numbers and the fact that does Israel not think that Palestinian lives are valued as highly as Israeli lives? That is an astonishing accusation. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> no, who said that? No shot. If we could release one prisoner for every one hostage, we would obviously do that. We are operating in horrific circumstances. We're not choosing to release these prisoners who have blood on their hands. We are talking about people who have been convicted of stabbing and shooting attacks. Notice the question of proportionality doesn't interest Palestinian supporters when they are able to get more of their prisoners out. But really, it is outrageous to suggest that the fact that we are willing to release prisoners who are convicted of terrorism offenses, more of them than we are getting our own innocent children back, somehow suggests that we don't care about Palestinian lives. Really, that's a disgusting accusation. Apparently, the IDF minister said today they expect the fighting to continue for at least another two months. Oof, we'll see. Just curious if any of the talks with people have changed your mind on anything. I'm, I'm hoping they will. I'm trying to get them to, but I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm running into this pattern. Um, I feel like I'm running into this pattern. Sometimes people will bring up things where it's like, oh, that's a bad thing, but the bad things that people. Uh, usually bring up are gonna be like one-off events. Like, oh, well, here was a time where an IDF soldier did this or that. I was like, okay, yeah, these are bad. I agree these are bad, of course. Nobody disagrees. But whenever big things are brought up, like say like that flotilla incident, or when big things are brought up, like, oh, well, look at where Israel's bad. When I start reading through the records, I find that I usually side with Israel way more in those circumstances. And I start to mis distrust some of the people that are evaluating these things as secondary sources or some of like the UNHCR or the Amnesty International shit or whatever. I start to, yeah. That's that's what's happened. I haven't, I don't think I've had any like major investigations yet where after doing a big deep dive, I'm like, okay, shit, this was really, really bad for Israel here. This was a huge f up. I will say this, it could be that there are a lot of big Israeli mistakes that were made from 84 and onwards in Lebanon. Um, I haven't done my big deep dive into the Lebanese wars yet. That, and I know, for instance, there's one hugely cited massacre that uh, I think Sharon was the, or Dayan, Dayan, I think. No, Sharon, Dayan. One of these two was the Minister of Defense um, when the Phalanges like, massacred that, um, those Palestinian camps. Um, there's at least that. So it might be that there's a lot of really bad Israeli activity that happened during the uh, Lebanese wars. And I have, I've just missed that because I haven't read through all of that. That was Sharon, okay. I haven't read through that yet. So I could be missing something there. I'm think Right now I'm thinking that's like the thing that I'm hopefully missing the most, but I don't think that's, because by the time we're in Lebanon, we're past 1980 now, right? We're talking about a group of Palestinians that were literally expelled from Jordan for trying to coup the king. Uh, it's like, yeah. And then also, I, I don't know, I don't know why or how. I can start to see, now that I know like more of the histories of like some of these countries, I feel like I can, I feel like I can start to see these like macro character patterns of like these countries or, or maybe the people in them, or maybe not, maybe I'm like dramatically overestimating, but like I can see why Egyptians might feel a certain type of pride about who they were, right? That coming out of like World War One and World War Two, like, yeah, we're the leader of the non-aligned world. We've got a massive military, big economy, a lot of people like ready to fight. I, I can see where like some of these personality types come from, um, if they even exist. Um, 
Jordan is like the cucked kid in the corner. I don't, I don't know anything. Lebanon's history just seems absolutely fucked. Um, Jesus Christ. I haven't, Lebanon, I'm trying to think of all the countries I want to study next. I don't know which one it would be. Now I'm like really impartial to the, or partial to, I'm partial to the Middle East now because now we've gotten some stuff here. And now when I start to remember like characters and faces and stuff, it's like, it's, it's way more entertaining hearing them all uh, engage with each other. Saudi people seem really cool, but I'm very biased towards Saudi Arabia. One is a US ally too. I think they explicitly try to be like more Western friendly. It's so like, I, Saudi Arabia seems interesting, okay? Um, uh, I feel like going up to Iraq is gonna give me a lot of good history on like Iraq and Iran. Uh, and the Kurdish people though, which might be more interesting. Also probably foreign stuff too, because of, I think in 1995, there was the Baghdad agreement. Um, did I say 95? It's 55. I don't know why I just said, is it 50? I don't actually know. Oh yeah, the Baghdad pact or whatever, 55. So I might get more international stuff here. Lebanese history seems ultra fucked. Lebanese history just, I don't understand anything. I read it and it sounds like basically in Lebanon, they wanted to make a Christian majority country for some reason. And then there's like three or four different groups of people that live here that have essentially been, like if you think Israel, Palestine is bad, um, I don't know why nobody cares about Lebanon or maybe we just don't hear about it, but it's like unbelievably fucking unhinged. Like this whole country is like, the whole history is just fucking unhinged. Um, I don't know why it's not talked about internationally more. I don't know any, I thought Lebanon was just like a chill place. Cause I always heard like, oh, Lebanon, they must be chill, I guess. And Israel, Palestine was like, their was like holy fuck. But I also want to know more about Iran too, because they're like Persians. They're like kind of separate from all of this, but not really, right? It's like the Arab League plus Iran. And Iran obviously has a lot of interests relating to Israel today and like to the West and the United States. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Why do you like pro-Western governments better when the West has a hand in f***ing up some of these nations like Iraq? Um, I just think Western style democracies and nations are like pretty cool. I do think there was a very interesting argument though Oh uh, shit, did this come from Irk? I might explore this like line of reasoning. I think Irk gave a very interesting argument, like an anti-democracy argument. Uh, it might not have been Irk though. It wasn't Irk, or maybe it was. I feel like it was Irk, but maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was somebody else. But somebody gave me a really interesting argument that in some ways democracy actually sucks shit because when you look at a lot of the historical actions of Israel, it's actually the anti-democratic people. It's the uh, the minister of defense. It's the uh, you know these closed door discussions where they're really trying hard to adhere to Western values, to win the support of the international community, to not attack it. But it's all of the anti-democratic elements of the government and the military that are trying really, really, really hard to maintain like their status in the world is not being unhinged. But as soon as more and more democratic elements are introduced to Israel, it's all of the voting people it's all of the democratically led things that end up f***ing ruining everything for the country and that in some ways maybe you could argue that the democratic parts of Israel are actually the more f***ed ones and if you would just make it um if you would just make it the 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 autocratic you know military leaders or whatever if you had them like doing diplomacy and all this shit as well maybe the country would be like a more moral place I don't know that's true or not I wish I could remember who made this argument to me in DMs I thought it was Eric but it, maybe it wasn't uh if Gistical made it he'd be spamming a chat with joy that I referenced it um I don't know if that's even a good argument though. I just think it was, I thought it was really interesting. Um, I, thought, I thought it was a really interesting argument to make. One of the most gruesome terror attacks in the history of Israel in 79. I don't know anything about this. Was this first Intifada? God, I, fuck, bro, this first one, who cares? I always mix this up so much. No, 80s, 87 to 93 is the first Intifada. What is happening around here? What was the initiation on this? Um, I also think that like, this is this is kind of like an anti-Western thing or it's kind of not cool, I guess. But like from, um, <clears throat> I see why like movies talk about like kings and shit. Uh, I think from like a narrative point of view, it's really cool to watch these figures that lead countries have personalities and take their countries in certain directions. Whereas I feel like for democratic countries, it's so not the case. Like we have a presidential leader for at most like eight years and like when I think of Egypt, like I think of like Nasser and, and uh, Sadat, like I think of these people. When I think of Iraq, I think of Saddam Hussein. I think of like um, the Assads for Syria. I think of all of the the Hashemites, the um, uh, all the all the little. Um, there's like different um, royal families for all of these uh, 
uh, Gulf states. Uh, you know, I think of like Dayan and Golda Meir and all of these like big name figures for Israel. And then for the United States, like, well, we have a democracy, so every four years we have like a new dude, basically. And it's like, oh fuck, well that's kind of lame. That's just like, we have like the United States. We don't have like, oh, this was like the US dictator for 17 years, like, okay, let's see what do we do, you know? I mean, like, obviously I think democracy is probably a more moral form of ruling. It's probably a better way to represent the, the will of the people, but it's so much less interesting, you know? That's like, okay, well, here's president, comes and goes, here's another president, come and go, here's another president, you know, it's like, ah, whatever. People are saying remove the two term limits for US president. I think the problem with the US president is <clears throat> the reason why term limits on presidents are probably really important in the United States is because uh, something you have to keep in mind is, uh, especially if you're a Euro, f our president has a lot of power. Our president has a lot of power. It's not like in a lot of European states, you've got this like cucked prime minister that has to like walk around and take like at least seven different days in his ass to form a majority government and all this and make all these cringe blah 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 our president is like ha, sorry my legislative bodies are passing shit i don't like <coughs> veto get fucked, right oh also by the way i'm the leader of the armed forces so i'm just gonna do what i want you don't think i have authority for it well, i'm pretty sure i got like an authorized use of military force like 30 years ago <laughs> so fuck you or oh you don't want to fund my military well i'll just sail our navy halfway around the world and we'll see if you want to fund and bring them back motherfucker right our president has a lot of power um so, I, so having term limits on the United States president is probably pretty important. It's not like a prime minister where you can like vote and no confidence them away or do like weird cuck shit. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like, yeah. I feel like the US president probably needs term limits, yeah. People are saying the UK prime minister arguably has even more power. Does he really? I don't believe you, f you. Does it, like, can the UK prime minister do things that are, that are equivalent to like the US like executive action or unilateral control over the armed forces? Is that like a thing? I actually, I actually don't know. I truly don't know. Maybe they, maybe they do. Do you glaze the founders of the United States? I bet if I did more research on them, I would. The little bit that I do know of the founders, I glaze the founders heavily. I think the founding of the United States was a truly unique and super special moment in human history. I think that the formation of our constitution and all the principles of our government and everything, I think we're ultra super omega based. But I also feel like on a macro perspective, like, if you believe that if you believe that yeah if you believe that the Jewish God allowed Israel to succeed in the Middle East, then you must believe the Christian God allowed America to succeed in the New World, okay? Because it feels like the whole world was kind of like stuck in this feudalistic kingdom bullshit and the economies were all slowly like we had this mercantilistic shit and everybody's kind of looking around and the, we had the weird religious bullshit of the king wanting like divorces and annulments and all this cuck shit or whatever and then you get a group of people who happen to be all 184 iq certified i've seen the tests number one okay number two the best powdered wigs okay and the best outfits come over to the united states they have a whole new territory to work with number one they're the smartest and brightest dudes in the whole world ever okay i don't know if people know this the only reason why Einstein was as smart as he was, he was a direct descendant of Benjamin Franklin and some unknown Ashkenazi Jewish woman, okay? But that's another for another time, okay? All the best people, they made the best constitution, the oldest living one still in use in the world, by the way. Get Europe, you guys think you have old shit? Our constitution is older than all of yours, suck a dick, okay? And then we had like a whole territory to expand to. So we got to do everything we wanted on our own. We even got to fight our own civil war without other people invading us. Okay? We had the whole stage, to, we had like the main character, okay? We got chances to build everything, we got chances to construct our shit, our government was cool. We did slavery, which kind of sucked, but then we got rid of that eventually. Um, and then like you guys in Europe were still trying to like figure yourselves out. You were so ass mad that like you, um, yeah, you just like started, you were bombing each other. You were so mad. You look at the US and like, God, how do these guys all work together? This is so cocked. And then you guys start going to war with each other, blowing all your shit up. We're chilling on the side. Like, okay, I guess we'll just like sell you guys shit and go fuck some shit up. And it's just like, so good. The United States is so cool, okay? It's a good ass place. So I'll say the oceans neighboring us are really important to this as well. I agree. That's why I said it was like a perfect moment in history, right? Like, if it would have been the case that like America was like attached to Japan or like it would have been like a hundred mile swim instead of the enormity of the Pacific Ocean, um, then it probably would have played out a lot different. I agree, yeah. <clears throat> oldest constitution. The United States of America has the oldest in use constitution of any country in the world. Um, this stupid cuck sh of, I don't know, what are they counting? The fucking Magna Carta? That's not your fucking constitution. Get the f out of here with this bullshit, with this cucky. No, f off this is bullshit no one cares about this you're, that's not your that's not the constitution that your government is currently using for your bullshit get out of here you brit fox you refute san marino hold on <laughs> okay well you know what let's find out 
Constitution of the Republic of San Marino is distributed over a number of legislative instruments of which the most significant are the Statutes of 1600 and the Declaration of Citizenship of 1974. Get out of here. The current legal system. Oh, look at this. Sorry, look at this country's name. The most serene <laughs> republic of San Marino. Are you allowed to add adjectives? What is that a... What, can I be like the glorious states of the USA? What is this? Can you do this? Does the UN recognize countries like that? Well, I guess it was a 1600, so no, I didn't. Cringe. United is an adjective? No, United is a proper noun, motherfucker, okay? We are, it's all part of who we are. I think my voice should be okay for a couple more hours. Um, the practice of dual heads of government. Oh, interesting thing. I have, I've got Qatari and Saudi Arabian people emailing me about their f monarchs and shit. Um, oh, but anyway, the explanation given to me about kings in Saudi Arabia is that in Saudi Arabia, you've got the king and then you've got the crown prince, who is the king's son or next in line to become king. F I forgot this. But apparently in Saudi Arabia, kingship doesn't generally pass to the next heir. It passes from uh, person to brother. And when the brother becomes king, because of how old it goes and because it's passing from brother, not to son, generally like the kings are like pretty old. So this is why the king is like the ultimate authority, but effectively the crown prince ends up exercising a lot of power because sometimes the kings get really old and then the crown prince is like the one that's running around doing everything. And the king is the only check on the crown prince, but. If we learned Arabic from Middle Eastern shit, do you have any idea how unbelievably powerful we would be? If you can read Arabic, can you read Hebrew? Um, or are these languages like totally fucking unrelated to each other? Not at all. Hebrew and Arabic are different languages, so even though there are many similarities, there are many differences. Oh. Well, that many similarities and many different. You're describing like everything ever. If I learned Hebrew, oh my God, dude. I would never beat the Mossad allegations. Oh. If you learn Spanish, the next arc would have to be solving the cartel situation. If we learn Spanish for South American history, that'd be super interesting. I watched a YouTube video um, offline. Bro, I'm such a fucking loser nerd for like everything history right now. Like even when I'm offline, I'm like watching and reading shit. Um, I watched a really interesting YouTube video that talks about the narrativation of history and how it's interesting that different countries have like core concepts that are related to understanding the history of the country. And for instance, like for the United States, South America is not a core concept. Um, or maybe your guys' education was different, but um, I don't know if we learned about a single South American thing in my entire high school education, ever. At like at a single time. I don't know if we ever mentioned a single country ever in the history of South America in all of US education. Um, but if you, but I think the guy was making the argument that um, if you, um, if you're in South America and you study history there, like if you go to school, like US intervention into South American countries, these are like core points for South American histories for certain countries. So it's in interesting that like the core concepts of some countries, the core historical narratives might involve other countries who don't even see it as like a core part of their narrative. Or for instance, like the, um, for the Mongols or whatever, um, I think they were, uh, but like for Genghis Khan and shit like that, like he's seen as kind of like a side note or whatever for Mongol history, Mongolian history. Um, but like for the rest of the world, that's like every time you say a Mongolia, they're like, oh my God, you mean Genghis Khan and all this shit? Um, yeah. Fuck, I wonder if I could find this video. It was actually really interesting. Um, well, it's that time of year again. Happy Genghis Khan Day. Uh, a year ago. Is it really pronounced Genghis Khan? Oh no, are we jiff? Are we jiffing Genghis Khan's name? Well, it's that time of year again. Happy Genghis Khan Day. Fuck. Okay. Uh, a year ago, I made a video on Genghis Khan Day talking about a certain aspect. What, I don't even know where I got linked this fucking video from. I must have been on a YouTube deep dive. It's good to look at history as an event experience and myth. What happened today? How do people think about it? Yeah. Well, this is also another reason why, um, because I recognize this too. History from like... <clears throat> Like the 1800s onwards is so cool and interesting. Uh, from like the, yeah, I'll say 18, the late 1800s onwards is interesting because there's like, there's so many documents, there's so many archives, there's so many descriptions, we've got video pictures, all of it is so cool. Like, cause you can like, oh, like what actually happened? History from like the, like the 1500s is like, what did the like 
kingly scholars write and it's like cringe i don't even know of any of this like there's, there's some narrativizing blah blah blah. and like prior to like the 1500s it's like whoever decided to write shit down like you literally have like jesus christ is like the history of like the zero to 100 like fuck this cringe like it's super cringe when you get like into early history and it's like oh like what happened in 1940 well in Auschwitz, you know, we've got picture evidence of all these, you know, mass graves from cremated Jews and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh, cool. Like, what happened in the year 130? Um, well, we dug up a fucking pot and there was a piece of shit smear that probably came from like Ptolemy, the fucking philosopher. And he wrote a poem about how a king had a 72 inch dick. But what we think that actually means is he probably had like 15 heirs and one of them, you know, became Cleopatra after they had a surgery. It's just like, it's, a, I don't know. I feel like old history is like cringe and reading about it is cringe and reading about the sourcing is cringe and the documentation is cringe and all of it is cringe. I, that, but maybe that's just me. Also, I hate history and I'm biased. So that came out of my own okay. But like, yeah, late 1800s onwards, based, okay? Um, yeah, I, people will say things like, well, the Romans were good historians. Really? Paul F., um, <clears throat> email me a picture that they took, bitch, okay? Or video, okay? Or even an, just an audio recording, okay? Link me a Roman audio recording. I want to hear a Roman talk, okay? Motherfucker. I want to hear a Roman talk and then I'll believe you, bitch. Respect of Genghis Khan's life. And some of the comments on that video were incredulous that there is such a holiday that, you know, how, why, you know, why would there be such a holiday as Genghis Khan Day, which is a national holiday in Mongolia. But, you know, people in the West, and I think people also pretty much everywhere except for Mongolia, think of Genghis Khan as a brutal conqueror. And so it's a little counterintuitive that there would be a holiday for him. So in this video, I'm going to talk about why. Why does Mongolia have a holiday honoring Genghis Khan? Let me start. What's interesting between the Romans and the Greeks? You want to know my worst history black hole? Is I honestly got have no fucking idea. Okay, I'm pretty sure one became the other. Like the Roman Empire fell, and the Greeks took over one or the other. And I all I know is that for English class, I had to memorize two completely fucking different set of gods because there was like the Roman gods, and then there were the Greek gods, and I think they were the same, but they all had like different names. Like, I have no fucking idea. What in terms of like, yeah, clip it for Twitter, boys. I have no fucking idea the difference between. Apparently, men are obsessed with Roman history or some shit. The only thing I know about it are the summon names in fucking Final Fantasy set. But actually, even those are aren't um wait even those i don't think are those are based on um fuck what's the name of it oh i should know this somebody tell me norse gods yeah wait were the norse gods roman i don't remember Name five emperors. Uh, yeah, there was probably Cassidius the fourth, Darcidius the twelfth, Barth Barthidius, Darth Sidious, and um, Brad Pitt. Okay, I watched that movie. It was a good movie. <laughs> yes. But I, I am more white than you. You look gypsy. I am blonde hair. Blonde hair I have. You gypsy. That means that someone f your mother that is your kid, but your father is not. Oh, your mother is a whore and she got fucked hey. someone. Yeah. You are weak Wrong. sperm. You are weak sperm. This is the strong sperm. This is the Greek god. Okay, Greek god. If you if you have if you have Greek god, you would have win, but you lose. <laughs> you lose where? You lose where? You lose. Why is why is Hagia Sophia this brother? <laughs> well, you're just talking like a mongoloid. I don't give a f I am a mongoloid. In my heart, I'm a mongoloid. That is what I am. We are a word. That is what we are. Yes, we are that. We are 100% that. That's not something to be proud of. It is something to be proud of, because the Mongols are the ones who created civilization. And you created nothing but barbarism. You're the fucking barbarians. You destroyed the treasures of mankind. The Mongols only united it. What the fuck do you know about civilization? What the fuck do you know about pride? What the fuck do you have to be proud of? Except looting, genociding, and destroying the cultures and peoples and wealth of this world. What the fuck do you know, Cans Cuck? Well, you're the one here chimping out, so... I am chimping out, bitch! Because I'm a fucking human being! And you're a little soy boy cuck, little bitch! You don't know who the fuck I am. No, I, I, I see you. I think you're a mongoloid. That's what you I am a mongoloid. You're right. It is what I am, and I'm proud of being that. 
Well, it's an anthropological term. It doesn't actually okay. mean Mongol. Okay. Oh, so what's your fucking point? You ugly, disgusting, fucking ugly, disgusting, fucking barbarian, smelly piece of shit. You want to talk racism? I can be way more racist than you, Angloid. What fucking civilizations did Angloids ever fucking have? It needed the Romans to fuck all of you in your ass to give you any civilization. You never had any of your own. You want to be racist? I could be way more racist. You want to talk a shit about Asians? What the fuck do you have on Asia, huh? I have nothing on it. You have nothing, because you're a Cam's cook, bitch. Oh my god, it's all, we've all, we've come full circle. <laughs> I didn't even realize it. Okay, sorry. The president had available to him intelligence from all elements of the government. Mm -hmm. And the National Security Council members had that information. It was all shared, it was all supplied, and it's never certain. If, if, it, were intelli if it were a fact, it wouldn't be called intelligence. I, the thing is that when I grew up, like most of the media that I consumed, the vast majority of media I consumed was talk radio. This is why when I think of like conservative commentary that I consumed growing up, it was um, Rush Limbaugh, obviously. Um, I think Billy Cunningham did radio back then. It was a lot of Glenn Beck. It was a lot of Michael Savage. It was a lot of, um, I think Sean Hannity um, was doing it back then as well. Um, yeah, these are like all the, so I'm used to just, I just like hear everything. I don't, I don't think I actually watched a lot of like news news. So for like, or on TV, I usually listen to things on talk radio. Hardcore debates. Wait, it's lichen? The rockets they use are indiscriminate um, weapons and yeah, are fired on civilian areas. And you know, it doesn't matter how many times you say that's a war crime. People are like, well, you're holding water for a mosque. It's like, no, it's just on the list of war crimes. One side has way higher count than the other. Um, and I want the side that, you know, we, we champion, that our nation, that our, our friendly nations, our, our allies, that we champion as the only democracy in the Middle East. Uh, you know, some people have said to me the most moral army. I don't know if that's a common talking point, but a guy I, I debated the other day um, Well, I mean, it's that. definitely what Blinken, it's definitely what Blinken would say, right? Like, the whole um, point of the human shields narrative, like Blinken only said the other day, like, the, the, the difference between... Hamas terrorists and the IDF is that we don't use human shields. I mean, we talked earlier about how that's not true, right? But like, it's def it's definitely part of the narrative is that Israel and the IDF is a moral army. Would, would you guys be happy to open this up a bit to Samantha? Because I know she'd like, because she's got sort of more of the military input as well, and though she might disagree. I mean, uh, is that food? Yeah, sure. I do. Samantha Sorry? Savage. Oh, yeah, no, not food shops. No, God. Um, um, food shops yes, has I'm absolutely no military experience. So, yeah. yeah if you... <laughs> Have you seen food shops? Come on. Yeah, I don't um... know. Being, <laughs> being in Twitch poll can give you a middle ground on that. Um, we are dealing with uh, a force that is not um, acting with any sort of concern for human life and dignity. Yeah, so, but like, I, I think it's a callback to like a lot of the things that Al Qaeda and the Taliban did, where it's like once they found out our ROE said you cannot sh fire upon a mosque or a school or, or anything like that, they would take those up as fire positions because they know we didn't target them. <clears> oh, wait, are they just doing like a, the their own conversation? Or I noticed Lycan didn't respond to me. Well, yeah, like Israel's not supposed to say that. According to international <laughs> law, Israel then has to act proportionally. Do you endanger this protective status of I mean, a Israel school, of a church? A lot of people to leave a lot oh, of these scared. And when you refuse to leave these areas. That doesn't give Israel carte blanche to... We drop I'm, glad, I'm, glad we, we, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad you brought that up because we, we dropped, had four we weeks. Pamphlets. I'm still speaking, sweetheart. Okay, this isn't your Rosa Parks moment. Get to the back of the bus for a minute, okay? You can continue in a second. Jesus. Um, wow. Like, in Fallujah, we drop pamphlets for seven <laughs> days saying, if you are an enemy combatant, leave Fallujah. If you don't leave, we're going to treat you as a combatant, and you'll be met with the force of the United States. Military. Join anyway? I don't even know how and I could join. Days, Where would I even join at? We fucking rolled through Fallujah, and everything that breathed, we made it stop breathing. Yeah, so four weeks and six weeks of combat, and both of those 600 civilian casualties and then 600 civilian casualties. Like you said, we spent days ensuring that as many people as possible could get out. The IDF said you have 24 hours to get the fuck out, and they only changed that after the United Nations and the rest of the West said, hey, fuck that, you can't do that, that's way too fucking much. Do you think they would have changed that they if no one had stepped in? Do you think they would have changed it, it if no one had stepped in? Don't know, I'm not there. Okay. Oh wait, and that's right, they're all the on Twitch, I can't join. 
the food and well i don't know actually if it matters that much if i'm there for like 20 or 30 minutes it probably doesn't matter much west push back so again do you think israel would have i'm asking you gun to your head to make a value judgment here do you think they would have changed I anything i i'm i don't know if they should have changed anything that's a little okay what what i'm gonna say is uh, I'm happy to flip over to Kick. I'm quite interested because I haven't seen. Oh before, shit! So I want to see um, where that goes, especially with the research. I've uh, seen all my live content from Destiny on this. So generally... Yeah, I want to. I, I'm going to keep this. I, I'm going to keep this. Calm. Oh, I know he's done a no. ton. Yeah, um, and I can so imagine what his position will be. It will be whatever he thinks will piss off the most lefty of lefties. <laughs> oh. Okay, yeah, I've actually kind of been to see this goes. Look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this reasonable Probably. though. So I will actually start active modding. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip over to Kick. Uh, like if you're speaking to Destiny, what I'll do is um, I'm just well, lost next to twenty bucks. An invite uh, into the group chat. Can you send that over to him? Yep, can do. Is that right? Yep. Because um, I don't think he's in my server. Fuck, I can message him myself, I suppose, but. Um, um, We'll put it in, we'll see how it goes. Um, I am going to flip over to Kek. Um, so, for those that have it, that's fine. I'm not going to raid us out or anything. I'll be live there in like two minutes, okay? Right, so I'm going to stop streaming. Go to the Kek channel. It's in the text chatty thing. Thank you, Hoz. Um, and I'll see you guys over there. I think I've ever even been near Kek. It is a hell site. Um, okay, I'm cool. I'm surprised. Flipping over. Seeing who, uh, seeing who set the whole fucking thing up. Yeah, not surprised at all. So let me just do that. <clears throat> and then that should be good. Okay. See it. Help. Oh, uh, we're live. Okay, cool. Right, we're live on kick. Uh, it should be fine. Um, hey, what is this? Uh, that. Full version of Palestinian cool. medic picking up right. a gun, giving it to an innocent. We're gonna keep the fight. Uh, what is the video? Just make sure that. I can actually oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Don't don't speak yet. Don't speak yet. I gotta turn off my kick uh, or my twitch. Okay. Everyone, come over to same channel. Like and cooks on on. Uh, Either YouTube or Kick. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Don't don't speak yet. Don't You're speak on yet. Kick I too? Fucking turn off. Every yeah, baby. On my kick kick. Everyone, come over to oh, the same channel. Like and cooks on YouTube on uh, fucking. You got Elon, over uh, there. Fucking That's hell yeah! Oh, I listen. I'm I'm trying to catch everywhere. Understandable. We can multi-stream now, anyway, right? Yep. Uh, I could multi-stream Twitch, Kick, and YouTube if I could be bothered to start streaming again. I have considered it over this shit, to be honest. <laughs> of genuine, I said I said to you earlier, didn't I, Becky? Yeah, I like, no, it's uh, might be up, nice. might be up my own stream, honestly, for the first time <laughs> in a couple of years. Streaming, streaming going, right? <laughs> cool. Um, like, can you good? Can can people say things now? Get it? Yeah, let's do it to it. Yeah, cool. Hi, hey, hi, Destiny. How you doing, buddy? Hey, pretty good. What's up? <clears throat> Wait, can I say slurs on Twitch? Uh, on kick. Uh, this is on kick. So I say yeah. slurs on kick. Which ones? Uh, it's amazing. Yeah. You can what? Actually do that <laughs> Which ones? Does it matter? I just, I just, I just want to call myself a <laughs> on stream and not get somebody's channel taken down. You know. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Oh, I can say <laughs> okay. Amazing. Hey. Um, right. Okay. We're gonna re. Whoa! We're this gonna place reset. is quite good, actually. <laughs> we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna reset slightly. So we've got. I do not approve of the slurs here. We're doing lichen. Um, Destiny, welcome. Um, lichen, do you want to just take it from your last point, and we'll just sort of go from there? Um, I think the overall point is that um, civilians and press and medical staff have protected status and I think it's very important that when there are wrongs that are done and it is proven that they have been um, unfairly targeted that their protective status was violated um, like we went over with the UN report for um, what's her name um, for Abakla uh, you know I think it's it, we it, we need to take these seriously, and that when we're talking about our ally, we hold both the Gazans and 
uh, IDF to the same high standard. Um, and just because the Hamas will um, be able to meet that standard doesn't mean that when it comes to Israel, we get to say, well, they put their people in, in, in harm's way and, well, they get to get targeted. No, we have to account for the fact that, while well, yes, those structures will lose a lot of protective status. The civilians there and the structures themselves still need to be considered uh, when the IDF decides their course of action, which means you don't get to just drop a bomb on it. You have to choose whatever means possible to limit damage to structure and civilian as much as possible in relation to the threat posed. And the fact that 50% of civilian structures, unless we think Hamas is playing some sick game of whack-a-mole and moving from point to point to point, to the point that at each time they move, they are a significant threat to the IDF, which isn't the case, and I don't think anyone here is willing to argue that that is the case, um, then yeah, the actions of the IDF in this war and wars past have been disproportionate and illegal. Um, I don't know if I'd say like a significant threat to the IDF uh, necessarily, but that's kind of not the point of a military force, right? It's not about the significant threat to the military forces, the significant threat to civilians. Sure. And again, like what what is the justification hey, for taking out 50 percent of civilian structures? Is it a significant amount of death that is caused on a daily basis from rockets launched from those points? Like in, in the engagement of this war, we have 10-7 massacre that happens and IDF wants to take action. And I do not fault them for that. What I do fault them for is 12,000 people dead in six weeks. What should the number be? Way lower. What should the number be? I mean, don't do gotchas with me, man. Well, no, but you're saying the number is too high, implying that you know for yes, a fact that and it should then, be lower. So my question is, what should the number be? Or what should it be around? How at this know? point, uh, at the rate that, like, I think it was like 286 a week during Operation Protective Edge, where it should have been a ground invasion. So yeah, I'd say we how should many, be probably Well, how many bombs were dropped in Operation Protective Edge? Uh, significantly less, but again, you can't justify the use of the bombs and say, "Well, uh, hey, they're all hitting military targets, right?" Again, well, do we, we know what the justification? The infrastructure. Do we know what the justification? What was the first point the that I made, Stephen? What was the first point I made? The first point you made was that there were too many civilian casualties. That's what I heard. Right. right? And, and so did I'm you asking, hear the part where I said, yeah. "No." Did you hear the part that I said <clears throat> where I said that the bombs being dropped uh, and the significant amount of infrastructure that is damaged? Um, no one can reasonably say that each one of those targets was a critical point that had to be taken out. Well, I don't know. What's an example of like a bombing that was clearly like unjustified? You're playing a gotcha game because you know I can't speak to every single bomb that was hey, dropped and the, the motivation for it, but I can make a, a critical well, bit of Well, I analysis would say, on the contrary, you're playing the gotcha game because you keep throwing this 50% number out over and over, which we both know is not true. I don't know why you keep saying that number. The 50% number is bullshit. You keep throwing that number out as evidence that clearly improper bombing is taking place, but I don't I, I don't know what it is there any Wait, I'm sorry. Are you sure you want to say it's bullshit? Because we went over this one on your stream together. Yeah, initially you had said 50% of homes were destroyed, and then when we looked for the original number, it was 44% of homes were either damaged or destroyed, and then we found the original original number, I think it was like 10% of homes were considered unusable, and the rest had some type of damage. If you want to find the original number, then tell me that I'm completely wrong, you can do it, but you keep saying like that 50%, like 50% of all residential neighborhoods I have gone between blast. I have gone yeah. between saying damaged and destroyed this entire conversation, so if you want to hit me with that point, sure. I will say that 45% have been damaged or destroyed, but I have the number right here, and this is from three weeks ago, and I think we're over, over over 50% now. <clears throat> okay, so, well, if, if it's a highly dense area, if you bomb one place and, like, a debris hits a building and, like, a window breaks, that would qualify as, like, the um, probably damaged, a bit damaged building is with a window broken, right? But And everything, yeah, sure. I mean, if we're going to say that, yeah, just windows, windows broken, you know, partially damaged, sure. Yeah, so, but then, like, so then the question is for any of the strikes. 40,000 destroyed. 40,000 housing units destroyed. Okay, sure. Are any? Do we know for a fact if any of these bombings were completely unjustified? Do we even have an inkling of that, or are we just going by the uh, numbers? Any, no, I'm saying that I think a significant number, based on the number of casualties and the number of infrastructure destroyed, I think that it is completely justified to say that these were not posing significant threats. I just, you're just, you're totally fabric. That's coming from nothing. You're pulling out of thin air, though. What? Okay, Stephen, define for me when you have justification to attack a civilian structure that is protected under international law or a structure with civilians in it. Uh, if the structure is being used, dual use as a military purpose, it loses its civilian protection status, number one. No, it doesn't entirely lose the status. Hold on. Yes, the it status absolutely. becomes compromised. No, it's that compromise means you lose it. You lose the status. No. Do you no. still have to consider do you still have to consider the civilians in that in when you choose how to, uh, how you're gonna go forward with the method of attack? 
Yes, but that's true of every single structure you attack. It's considered a military target. But even on military targets, you have to consider like civilian collateral damage. So you do. And do you think that use, utilizing these bombs are the most uh, effective method of attack? Well, that'd be my guess. I don't. I haven't heard the U.S. suggest anything different. I haven't heard anybody else suggest anything different. So I don't know if there's a more effective method. I, I haven't heard it yet. Everybody keeps saying there is. The more effective to... method is a ground campaign, which they should have done from the first week. They do their bombings of initial key uh, infrastructure, which is probably still going to cost a significant number of lives. But they go in after that and they do a ground invasion. You're going to lose far less people, and your troops are going to have to be far more discriminate in what they attack and how they go forward. If you're going to take out a, a, a weapons cache, if you're going to take out you know, a, a, a stronghold or anything like that, yeah, it's going to be a little more difficult, and it's got to be done in a way that takes into consideration the minimum loss of civilian life. It, first of all, there's no obligation for minimum loss of civilian life ever. That's If you can find me something like that, I'd be very interested. In. You have to weigh yep. the cost nope, of civilian you. life. Sure. You have to weigh the cost of civilian life military targets, but there's no obligation under any international whatever to no, like, do the No, the obligation minimal. is that you can't put the risk on the civilian. So instead of choosing an option that might be more risky to your troops, and instead opting for something like an aerial attack, yes, in that instance, you cannot put that risk on the civilians. You cannot opt for the easier option for you and your troops. You have to put your troops at risk. Uh, that might be true, but if you can still justify it as a military target, you can justify it as a military target. There's no, like, if you can blow a military target up with an airstrike, there's no obligation that, like, if three civilians are gonna die, you have to send your whole soldiers in anyway. Like, that's not, that's, there's no obligation there. No, the obligation is that you try to minimize as much as possible. So if you could save those three people by doing a, a targeted attack, if you've got one sniper sitting in a building, you're doing aerial observation, you have no reason to believe that anyone else is there, and you've got like a small, what, three, five person team firing rockets, or you have to assess whether or not that is providing a significant threat. And then two, you have to decide what is the best course of action that can limit the number of people that die in that building. Okay, is there any example of a ground invasion that has ever played by these rules ever in the past, even in the past 25 years? Yes, Fallujah, Iraq. So in Fallujah, we did no airstrikes at all? No, we did airstrikes, but we spent seven days evacuating as many people as possible okay. before we did well, it. Did, and then we over... only incurred 600 casualties each okay. time. I could be wrong, but weren't we there over- We didn't evacuate, we dropped pamphlets to tell them to evacuate. Weren't there over 100,000? We also 000... used loudspeakers and translators to tell people to get the fuck out from the city perimeter. Yeah, weren't there over 100,000 people uh, killed, uh, like civilians killed due to military operations in the Iraq war, in like a month, am I wrong In the whole that? entire war? Sure. In the, the war, the whole war, wasn't the whole war like a month or something? Am I wrong? Hold on, I can be wrong. No, the Iraq war was fucking uh, 2003 to 2011 was OIF and then O. Oh, you're, con you're considering the whole occupation and everything afterwards. Okay. But I'm, I'm thinking like in our initial invasion from invasion up to deposing of Saddam Hussein. Um, okay, somebody in chat said 9,000 civilians were killed in the first three years. So we were still bombing things, right? Where we probably could have sent in ground forces anyways. But it sounds like your argument could be used to like you should never bomb anything ever because you can always go in with ground forces. No, you bomb key known military targets and you do so in a way that is gonna minimize civilian casualties. Usually when we're in a, a war against someone like Saddam Hussein, we know where the military targets are. We're bombing bases, we're bombing airstrips, we're bombing uh, weapons caches on military bases, but we're not bombing the middle of cities with no um, significant issue. I think we might bomb, I think we might have bombed the parliament building, perhaps, I'm not sure. Um, but for the most part, we are bombing key strategic targets. And so my point with Gaza City is that it might take some time. It might be protracted, but Israel is now in a heightened state of alert. The chances of another 10-7 coming over the border are significantly lower now after 10-7. And that the threat that they have to minimize is going to be the threat of uh, significant death to civilian or military um in any grand capacity and then you use ground troops and you come in and you neutralize key targets from that well, point like, on like a question so like with how we did things over there right so if we had ground troops in there uh we still did bombings with ground troops right because we call in casts right so like of course okay so ground troops isn't going to stop bombing it's going to do just more targeting like localized targeting you you're still going to end up with civilian casualties I'm not arguing still against going to take, really still going to, They are still going to take fighting against positions against in buildings full of people, because this is what they do. And literally we're going to have to call JDAM or something on there. Literally nobody has said that no civilian casualties um, should be incurred at all, ever. And if you kill a single civilian... So you're uh, fine with civilian casualties. You just want other people there to be able to up the amount of casualties that would be in the no. area. No. 
no, no, that 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 the force uh, in carrying those casualties should take whatever means necessary to minimise the uh, civilian casualties while while attaining their objective. Okay, that that works great when you're fighting an army that has rules of engagement and tactics, not when you're fighting a terrorist group of jihadists who love to run into heavily populated areas to do the fighting in hopes that we won't return fire. Okay, so if you have a bunch of fucking terrorists run into the middle of New York, then dropping a nuke on New York to get rid of those terrorists, very Nobody's fucking bad. Nobody's dropping a nuke. Very fucking That's like bad. A horrible, I never said they like, were. Example. Never said they were, right? But we're talking about ridiculously disproportionate means of wiping out, out those terrorists, right? Like, obviously, everybody would view that as, an, as a moral abomination, right? So, there is at least some bar here that you and I both agree you can't you can't do just to kill the terrorists because they've walked into a, a, a built up area or whatever. There is right. going to be some bar. I think we all agree with that. If, the, if like a million Palestinians have been killed so far, like, this is insane. But we also, I think it's important to understand that nobody, do we all, does everybody here agree sure that Hamas there, yeah, that Hamas by design is trying to maximize civilian casualties? Do we all agree with that or no? I, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I mean, I don't know if. Okay, depends how we're using the word maximize here. Yeah. Yes, like when we're talking about Islamic terrorism, generally speaking, we're talking about like targeting of civilian uh, targets uh, as opposed to military ones because if it's impactful, and this is like pretty well laid out in the literature anyway. Um, but there's a historic precedent with this of like the targeting of athletes. Um, for example, because you know it's going to have the effect. And generally speaking, mm. it's the same reason we don't see terrorist groups attack things like energy grids much, because they're not looking at infrastructure or military damage, they're looking at uh, effect of public consciousness. So, yes, by design as a terrorist organization then or, or a militia, uh, their modus operandi is going to be different from a uh, normal military. Do we all agree on that or do we disagree on that? We should say there. Do we all agree that Hamas, may, maybe I won't say maximize, but Hamas wants as many civilian deaths as like they reasonably can? 100%, yes. I, 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 could, I could concede to that. Yeah, sure. They, will, they know that there's going to be a, a PR benefit to more civilian deaths. Okay, so does Vivian agree no, to that not, or no? I'm, um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I, think it's, I think it's possible. But I can't, I can't fucking read them. When, when October seventh happened, I went on this tour of like talking about the Zarqawi method and how jihadist terrorists try to show the face of evil to the West and then the face of utopia to the people that they want to recruit. Right, that's the sort of TLDR Zarqawi one hundred and one. But like, um, one one thing has disturbed me so far is that we haven't seen um, brutal execution videos of hostages. Right. Uh, which is something that I'd expect to see from Isla uh, from an Islamic jihadist group that is using this uh, uh, this kind of propaganda tactics. Do I think that Hamas are okay with civilian um, targets being hit and a lot of civilians being killed uh, because it's like it works out good PR for them? Um, yeah, I think they probably are. Um, Wait, just as a quick question, has Hamas ever done videos of executions? Um, I thought that was like, I know head. ISIS does. I know I've seen others from, obviously, well, yeah, Al-Qaeda Al and, Al and yeah. yeah, so Al-Qaeda and ISIS are the uh, are the groups that you would most typically associate with Zarqawi. <clears throat> but, like, since, um, since, since then, obviously, a lot of other kind of groups around the world have, have learned from Zarqawi, right? Even going to, like, the base in the United States, you know, the weird-ass neo-Nazi group, right? So, um... But it's just that if they were if they were following this particular method of propaganda, I would expect to have seen some um, executions of hostages by now, like videoed executions of hostages by now. Um, that's not something I've seen. Maybe they're out there. I don't know. Maybe I'm not aware of them yet. But I I, I haven't seen any so far. But anyway, what what I uh, what I will say in response to your question is, uh, I th I think they're probably okay with civilian max casualties. Um, are they are they specifically trying to maximize casualties? I, I don't know. It's possible. That's what I'll say. Okay. Uh, give me one second. We might add one other person. Um, oh, God. 
hanging out. <laughs> Somebody who's uh, apparently IDF. Ugh. Could be helpful. Wait, not, yeah. f not f Raffi. Wait, wait, do we need hey. another pro Zionist person here? Is that, do we need that right now? <laughs> I don't know if we, I don't know if we need it. Like, we'll, we'll see how this is going for, uh, uh, the Zionist side. I don't know if it, I don't know if Zionist uh, is. I mean, we're not really even arguing that. Zionism or anything like that. No, we're just not arguing really. about whether or not the military um, actions are justified. I mean, does it, okay at, at base, uh, is there any common ground between anyone here that, when looking at the actions, going, what is justified then? So, at what point? For those that are condemning the actions of the IDF, after October the 7th, are you like, okay, well, that was too far? Was it like the immediate retaliatory bombing? Was it uh, the ongoing incursions? Was it the blockades of water, gas, and power? Uh, I mean, it was, yeah, sure. It was the, um, now, someone in Stephen's community uh, continues to say that uh, they did not give them a 24 hour notice to evacuate the strip. I have yet to find this counter source to this and I've searched it every time that point's been brought up. So someone can please provide me that link, very much appreciated. But I will say until I provided that link, the 24 hour warning get the f out of Gaza where I do not believe that Israel would have ever changed their mind on that if it hadn't been for any sort of significant Western pressure. Um, the uh, the continued blockade or the, uh, the escalated blockade of, of food, water supplies to Gaza and the um, uh, the initial airstrike, I'd say about 48 to 72 hours into Israel's retaliation, um, they had gone too far. Um, the significant number of death in relation to any threats posed. Um, yeah, I think that's a pretty big issue. And then I, I have another... Go ahead. Would you, would you say that about other wars, though? In um, what case have we, we committed that kind of a, a, an immediate civilian slaughter? Um, Afghanistan. Okay, well, <laughs> Um, I we were there within 18 hours, dude. Come on. We were there, but again, we weren't bombing in the middle of Kabul city. We were bombing mountains. We were looking for Taliban and Al-Qaeda strongholds. Because live in mountains, too. Like, you have to understand, like, we, we did that, like, very quick, disproportionate, like, not disproportionate. We did a very quick response to Afghanistan. Uh, there were civilians living amongst the Taliban in the mountains. Korongo Valley had, like, it was the not Taliban by any stronghold, significant measure, but it was also sure. had a ton of civilians. Not it, by any like, significant but, measure. So then, what is the, the number that's acceptable these, to you? Listen, what is I the number? So we have that kind of going, response, but now you want to shift to like, well, it's a number. I'm not shifting not anything. What I'm saying is that, yeah, if you look at six months and not twelve thousand people dead, most of which are going to be civilians, half of which are going to be children. Yeah, I'm going to take a huge issue with the time frame. Take your time be strategic if you want to go after this enemy absolutely do it but do it in a way that takes into consideration international humanitarian law and the lives of civilians I honestly don't think that I, I think that whatever response Israel did like the world would be up in arms of cry baby bitch shit over if Israel didn't have a history of disproportionate response um, See, the, and so it, hold over so, bombing like, campaigns yeah What would have been okay? So I think this leads back to like the earlier conversation about the um, a military what? occupation version uh, versus kind of air ground, uh, air force striking. I, I, if I'm, I'm just, I'm just wondering, right? Like, um, if uh, if some not job militia came out of uh, uh, in Alabama or whatever, right, and uh, started started murdering random civilians in neighboring states. States no, neighbor Alabama. I don't know, um, <laughs> but uh, started murdering people in neighbor uh, neighboring states, right? And then went back to Alabama, and they're all sort of like uh, hiding out among the town or whatever. Like, and and the U.S. Air Force did to Alabama what uh, um, what Israel's done to Gaza. Like, would you be okay with that? Wait, hold on. Before anybody has said, Vivian, I'm going to say that this is a horrible analogy. Can you guess why? Um. I can guess why. It's probably it's a point that I'm going to argue with you about. But do you have an answer to the question first? No, no, no. no. I, the analogy. I'm going to reject the analogy. But I'm curious if you'll know why I would reject the analogy because it's a ridiculous analogy. And you keep you've made like three of them so far. I'm curious what, if you have any idea why, or if you are truly thinking these are good analogies. I'm just curious what you'll say. If I if I'm going to reject the analogy, why would you think I would reject any of these analogies? 
<clears throat> well, I think you're probably going to reject the analogy because you're going to say that the uh, um, the Alabama's like part of the United States, right? Uh, and that those are American citizens, as opposed to Gaza, um, who are ostensibly under the governance of Hamas. No, and not even close. Not Israeli citizens. What no? I'm going to say uh -huh. is, you're 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 pointing out one lone shooter or one lone gunman in a state that the vast majority of the state would probably heavily reject and would probably cooperate with the rest of the federal no, government. No, I said some nut job militia came out. Right, I'm talking about... Oh, a, even a, a nut job people. militia. Notice how you have to phrase that, nut job militia. What if you made it yeah, more like what, if you said, what if you said, what if you said that, uh, <clears throat> what if you said that, what if you said that, Arizona was being invaded by the LAPD. That the LAPD grabbed 50,000 officers, they would cross the border into Arizona to shoot and kill people, and then go back to California, and that when the federal government was like, we need to see these shooters, and they go, sorry, we're a sanctuary city, we don't cooperate with the federal government. And then these attacks continued for 20 years. At that point, and let's say that the citizens of LA were like, eh, you know, uh, they haven't held elections for a while, but you know, we did vote them in, and we do think that we need to be violent against Arizona, because it's Arizona, Jesus, who likes Arizona, right? But also the LAPD was funded by China, Russia, No, we don't even need that part. North we don't even Korea. need that part. We didn't even need that part. This is difficult for me because my knowledge of American geo uh, so, geography is well, about as good as Stephen's I've, knowledge I've got, of geography okay, in general. Okay, okay, okay. We're not talking about <laughs> Stephen, the, um, so with that analogy, or we can go with like Tijuana and the cartels, wait, I want, right? No, no, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 I want, no, 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 I want no, Vivian to engage with that. I want Vivian to engage with that. The police force. Right, right. So you're talking about, you're talking about the length of the, the length of the situation, right? No. No, I'm talking okay, about the fact it? that it's the representative police force of a region that ostensibly has some kind of support from the citizens and is like operating in a territory with said citizens and then they're going over and doing terror attacks on a neighboring state. Okay, cool. In that situation, would you be okay with the response from the American government? If the, the American government system. said, if the American government went to California and said, California, you need to turn these people over, and California says, not only we're not, we're not going to turn these people, if you try to come in and get them, we will kill you and we're going to start hiding these cops in like civilian houses and shit if at some point these attacks continued against arizona the u.s government's like okay well we're going to start marking houses and man bombing parts of your cities if you're not going to do anything about this yeah i think that there is a stronger argument for the federal government there to do violent intervention yes okay because i mean like mainly my point with that is that is that they're still um but these people are at least to some to some extent the responsibility of the Israeli government. We're not really talking about a war between two um, uh, between two foreign powers. Like it's almost a civil war. Here. How is it a civil? It's not a. How is it a civil war? Well, because Israel occupy Gaza, right? And a military occupation um, does an occupied is, territory become part of a civil war if it's an occupied territory? I said it's akin to a civil war. It's not right? akin to a it's civil war. Civil war is two of the same people fighting against each other. Pretty sure Palestinians would rope you if you called it a civil war, because that means that it's the same people as the as the war, European settlers. A that civil came war in. is not okay. A civil war is not necessarily uh, two of the same people. It can be two different ethnic demographics, definitely two different religious demographics, definitely. Right? It's that these two people are united under one government, right? Which is which is essentially the claim that I'm making is that at least to some degree, um, Israel Israel governs Gaza, right? Um, Israel does not govern Gaza. Gaza. They, they have Gaza. blockades and stuff. But it's not. They're not governing it. Um, there was a separate it, government. A there is a separate. There is a separate government. You're absolutely right, right? That's why I said to some extent, um, Israel has control over Gaza, right? Israel Israel is a governing force in Gaza because it controls certain things about the way uh, people get to live in Gaza, especially what resources they can have, but also where they can go, what they can do, etc. Sure. I mean, if you want to do it akin to a civil war, I mean, if that's the case, then you probably would expect to see this level of destruction then, right? How many, didn't over, didn't over 500,000 people I mean, die I, in the U.S. I, civil I, war? I, like, there's a lot of, I mean, if that's, if that's the comparison you want to go with, but. Yeah, to put it, uh, to put it in super simple terms, like, I, th I think Israel has um, as much responsibility or nearly as much responsibility for the citizens in, uh, of Gaza as they do for their own citizens, right? The people they would actually consider their citizens. Um, and especially even more so in the West Bank, right, where they're still f***ing murdering people. Um, and also where I, Palestinians I are murdering Israelis and other terrorist groups are murdering Israelis as well, right? Sure, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 
uh, Palestinian terror groups are murdering oh. uh, Israelis and Israeli terror groups are murdering Palestinians and the Israeli state is murdering Palestinians and the Israeli state actually has appointed ministers within its administration who are members of terrorist groups or who were members of terrorist groups that have murdered pa- Palestinians. Yep, and the and and in Gaza, the, you have uh, a, a a a devolved government. Let's call it right in Hamas, who uh, who are terrorists who've murdered Israeli citizens, etc., etc., etc. Right. But my okay, point that's is fine. That and the go, leader of uh, the Israel. the leader of the PLO, the moderate uh, Palestinian government that the rest of the world is hoping to hand shit over to. Okay, Abbas, his PhD dissertation was literally talking about the relationship between Nazism and Zionism. Nobody has. Okay. Uh, nobody has no. Fucking, nobody has any fucking faith in 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 a bus. Everybody's like fucking a bus is useless, right? Even in the even in the West Bank, nobody has any fucking faith in a in a bus. Anybody proposing a bus to take over is a fucking idiot. All right, but like, okay, that's a trend, by the way, in Palestinian leadership that nobody can lead them because they're all terrorists or insane. That's not like a unique thing with a bus. I as, as that's a pretty broad to, statement uh, to make about uh, all Palestinians. I said Palestinian to, uh, leaders. Hmm. Well, most of so, them have been involved in so, uh, politics for a really long time and have seen uh, multiple uh, wars, right? So, yeah. I mean, they're going to be they're going to be militants. Generally. Oh, well, then that's an excuse yeah. for Israel as well, then too. So my they question is multiple like, wars as well. Yeah. I never you're said pretty... it was. A, I never said it was an excuse. It's just a reason, right? Like, I don't know why you're trying to keep pigeonholing me into like, oh, you're supporting Hamas, blah blah. F- Hamas, absolutely, one hundred percent. Hamas, okay. Hamas, fuck any act of terrorism which deliberately targets civilians. The only reason that I'm talking about Israel targeting civilians is because that's what this conversation is currently about. If you want to have a conversation about what happened on uh, October 7th and talk about how fucking awful and disgusting Hamas are, I'm completely fine to do that. I just don't think it's particularly useful because what's happening right now, right, is that is that Israel are leveling half the fucking Gaza Strip. They're forcing uh, the population to move further and further and further south. They've cut off... Uh, w- w- we now have a situation in which people are uh, living on... Th- starvation rations don't have access to electricity water whatever right um and we're looking at a massive humanitarian atrocity and the attitudes of people in the israeli government are what matters to this uh not not the attitudes of people in 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 hamas except maybe with regards to like how long you can make a ceasefire last but i don't think that the israeli government want a ceasefire to last of course right? they don't because they want to get rid of hamas yeah, because they all the people that are screwing hamas no they, yeah. they, they violated ceasefires before to continue to stoke it because they want their military to seem uh, uh, much more superior in the region to use their I mean they have capacity. but I think they do I think they do really need and because to they want to stall out. the political process they do not want Gaza mm. to, or Palestine to become a state they don't I think, yeah. I think well, the I, party I, I, does not want Gaza to become a state I agree, Wait, hold on. I agree, I agree, literally I everybody that. violates ceasefires okay number one everybody violates these fires number one and number two i mean right now they probably don't want them to become a state because who the fuck would even lead that palestinian state but they haven't for years so we can't just look at it now and say well now who would want it because they've i been actually doing this think i actually think like and there's there's like a difference in policy now right because i think that uh previously there is this all-out uh attempt by netanyahu except for the small period where you have like a more left-wing government in the, in israel there's this all-out attempt by uh, netanyahu and the people who sympathize with him um to stop the idea of the establishment of a Palestinian state at all costs, right? But since October seventh, um, uh, Israel and the uh, Israel has made its position very f-ing clear that its military objective in this fight is to eradicate Hamas, right? And I and I don't think that they can continue doing what they've been doing, essentially uh, uh, f- focusing on. Um, Focusing on suppressing the ideas of uh, the establishment of a Palestinian state, I don't think they need to, right? Because I don't think anybody—I I don't think anybody's in a position to establish a Palestinian state right now, right? Um, I think I think they do genuinely just uh, have to now try and follow what they said their objective was, which is to try and wipe out Hamas, right? So they're like the ceasefire isn't going to last. There is no. It, in, isn't going to be any lasting ceasefire so we as the international community not us here on this panel because who really gives a fuck what we say or think uh generally right but um our governments at least right have to be placing pressure on israel to abide as much as possible within the confines of international humanitarian law 
uh, in in order to make the humanitarian crisis that is fucking inevitable that is already ongoing um, as as uh, as as small as possible, right? As uh, less harmful, less people die, less people suffer. Blah blah blah. I mean, a base. This kind of like conversation, I think, twisted to like, what yeah. are the options, right? So, because I, when I had this, when this came up in a debate for me like months ago, um, I think I said something similar to kind of the fact of just mitigating civilian casualties and got accused of just being in support of ethnic cleansing. And mm. it's the same question around uh, the occupation in some some regards because I feel like if from an ideological point of view, if you sat there going, well, military occupation is the obvious answer to that, um, and then you either remove or curtail the government or do what the West always does, which is kind of try and force democracy as a top-down um, system, it doesn't seem to work anyway. So when this has been going on, and most of the debates I've seen, they don't seem to address the core issue that this is a recurring factor in the region. Um, mm. And unless you've got like a uh, unless there is a clear fix for that, I think what annoys some people about the debate is it ends up becoming a question of, well, this is the good ideological stance, so this is what we should support, but it's not a realistic, pragmatic um, stance for a long-term resolution. And we can be outraged at things. Um, I don't think that's an unreasonable want, but at the same time, it's like, well, what do you do in that situation? And I think as well, like watching a lot of people talk about, um, and just talking about the propaganda that's coming out of it, it's, it's quite shocking, I think, to see mm. the amount of people who are prepared to use images from Syria. Now it's convenient as propaganda in the Israeli conflict, yeah. right? So clearly it's not like cut and dried from a Western perspective. Yeah. Um, I think it's weird that we've gone here from, from uh, what we were originally talking about, which was like... Um, uh, whether or not like attacks on journalists and possibly civilians were like deliberately targeted um and and the accountability for war crimes and so on right because i think that's that's what like broadly the left the, like the left wing of this argument wants is at least some sign that there's going to be some accountability and that we can rein in some of the excesses uh, of the is Israeli government when it comes to committing more crimes against civilians, right? Um, and Israel, and, and me and Lycan talked for a while before this on the long history that Israel has with committing these uh, war crimes and the limited accountability that, that exists for them. Um, How many UN resolutions have there been against Israeli war crimes? <clears throat> what do they do? Well, man, I'm just How are UN resolutions accountability? That's just a bunch of people going, hey, we don't like this, please stop. Oh, okay. Like, I thought, well, what was I was going to say, I'm pretty the sure there have been... What was the result? Though the point, I'm pretty sure, is there's been quite a few UN resolutions against certain um, Israeli actions. I don't know, that. I don't think there's ever been a single UN resolution against the actions of Hamas. I think that even when they tried to get one recently over the October 7th... Well, I mean, it, at some point, it's probably going to damage Israel's, or a uh, unilateral resolution against Hamas. Um, I think at some point, it's probably going to damage Israel's trust or care for things like what the UN says, because, well, why the f*** would they care? The UN is basically there to... They already don't care. Because Israel, Israel is part of the United Nations, right? Hamas is not part of the United Nations. Like, a UN resolution to the... Uh, a UN resolution to Israel means nothing. A UN resolution to Hamas means less than nothing obviously the un don't approve of the uh of the okay but if you say like the un and, and everything means nothing well then why the f are we talking about war crimes what does that have to do with anything who cares because because we're talking about the lack of accountability right the fact that a un resolution means nothing uh is is a source of great frustration to those people who see civilians being hurt suffering and dying um with no fucking accountability for people who could reasonably be said to be not at least, and couching my language very fucking carefully here, at least not taking the greatest care in avoiding that death and suffering, right? Like the 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 theater of uh, the theater of war needs to needs to be uh, heavily fucking policed. Like when there are war crimes, people need to people need to be held uh, held to account. Just as in uh, <coughs> Russia with Bucha and shit, right? We want to see the war crimes tribunals for that, and it yeah, seems. I understand like what you're saying, but I'm just saying that like. Together a in case for it but it doesn't seem yeah. like anybody's been together a case for it i understand what you're saying but like one i don't know if i don't think israel's even signed on to some of these like international criminal court things i don't think the united states has either right why would sure, israel neither was 
in Coney, but he was still tried in the sure. ICC. Why would Israel sign on to these if the enemy that Wait, the chief- Wait, was Coney tried in the ICC? I have no idea. <laughs> Whatever. If, if, <laughs> I don't know if you try yeah. individuals in the ICC or countries or states. I'm not even sure. But if, if oh, Israel or the United States are not a party to these and they know that their enemy is not a party to it, why would Israel care? I mean, Sorry. are we saying are we saying why should they care from like a legal standpoint, or are we talking from a moral standpoint? I'm saying in terms of why would Israel try to conduct itself in a way that puts it like above board for every single possible uh, like war crime or con or yeah, or I'll say above yeah, every possible was war crime. in the ICC. Where uh, if Sorry. they know that their enemies aren't held to that standard whatsoever, why wouldn't they just rely on their own internal uh, metrics or military justifications? Why would they ever submit themselves? Ever why would we hold water for that when they continue to do egregious things in the name of? whatever actions they want to take and against you know human in, internationally recognized human rights law why would we hold water for that like whatever uh, reason they decide they're not going to do that why should we not as as civilians of the world uh who look at these actions why shouldn't we have issue with it why would we defend that why would we try to find excuses for why they <coughs> why don't do, we do want it? well the first question is is do we feel like the question is, do we feel like Israel has a right to not care about submitting itself to the authority of the international courts if their enemies don't I don't care about whether I mean first of all they they because refuse to do because so it's, because they're they members know they'll of get they do but they're they members of international ICC they're members of international uh, they're a member of international organizations that come with certain benefits and privileges they're seen as the democratic arm of the west in the middle east right which also comes with certain privileges our nations provide diplomatic cover for them and send them financial aid okay right? wait so hold on All real quick israel has no benefit i don't think for like from un shit israel is a huge benefit for being right now uh like an ally to the united states so it seems and like at the end of the day look bad doesn't make us look bad it could, yeah, that might be why. To the standard. It, well, that might be why Biden is pressuring them, right? But I'm saying from an Israeli perspective, they don't have any like motivation, or uh, it, there's no reason for them to submit themselves to third-party international courts because Hamas obviously I mean, isn't, and neither is anybody else in the region that hates them. So the only thing at the end of the day, Israel's probably thinking about is like, wait, well, what keeps the Americans their on our side? To is their is their ability to remain part of these uh, uh, international coalitions and to continue receiving support from Western nations, both diplomatic, financial, and in terms of like soft power right like I, that's i i just wait don't what are we talking about right now hold on or i don't understand what you just said <clears throat> okay well because they are part of these organizations they ha they have to at least ostensibly agree to some of the rules of being part of these organizations sure right? but like what it, here's like a question i genuinely don't know okay you could shoot massive dunk on me because i really don't know what has Israel gotten from the UN in the past like seventy five years? Do they get anything from the UN? Like what is the like what is the beneficial status there for them? Uh, I mean, probably their largest ally in the world, the United States, is a permanent member of the Security Council, and so they get to uh, uh, they get to have a certain influence on certain uh, resolutions. Yeah, but that's the United the States, not the UN. Right, and the United States pretty much always votes in favor of Israel uh, in the uh, in 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 the UN, right? Yeah, but we already uh, said that like UN resolutions mean nothing, which is I think is probably generally we agree on that. UN resolutions won't do much. And if the United States is an ally to Israel, it doesn't matter if it's a fourteen to one or whatever fucking vote against the United States and the UN. It's not like the US is pulling support from Israel because of the United Nations. So why again should the Israel ever give a fuck about what the UN thinks about what any of it does? Uh, because UN resolutions are supposed to guide policies of member nations. Okay, and I mean, at the end of the day, the UN is the most, like, the most, not the second most authoritative body on international law. If they're going to make assessments like this, it, it doesn't matter if they've been charged. A resolution has been passed. They put distinguished people on these panels or experienced people on these panels. They have multiple people that run the panel, and they do fact-finding missions with deep investigations, whether it's forensic evidence, whether it's a ca a gathering testimony, video footage, and they do analysis and they make ju they make assessments. And they say, we find that this has been done in violation of international humanitarian law. These were war crimes, whatever. I mean, okay, wh so why what? are we working so hard to undermine those bodies? Yeah, when I'm, not trying to to I'm not trying to undermine the bodies. I'm just saying that these bodies are like clearly are preferential to the adversarials or the adversaries of Israel. Israel obviously doesn't give a f about what these third party bodies say. So like we can scream all day about like war crimes, war crimes, war crimes, blah, 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 blah. But there's like, if these, if these international tribunals or whatever, or if the UN or all of these other larger third party institutions don't hold any of these surrounding states accountable for anything or don't hold Hamas accountable for anything, why the f 
would Israel try to play by that rule book? I mean, if we're going to go by that rule, then we can hand wave whatever Hamas does, right? Like, if we're going to say that for Israel, then it's like, well, fuck it. It already is hand wave. Fuck it. There are no... uh, Fuck it. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Hold on, wait, wait. What did you mean exactly by that? Like, what would we hand wave that's not already hand waved? Everything is already hand waved for Hamas. Wait, the Goldstone report explicitly calls out Hamas and calls calls out out? war crimes. What does it do? What happens when they get called out? Again, the same... Hold on. The same citations I make about the Goldstone report for Israel, I'm saying they make the same claims against uh, Hamas. Yeah, but who cares? So I'm saying... The point is that a governing body with, a, a, again, authoritative uh, power over these kind of, um, or an authoritative understanding of these um, international laws has made an assessment. And what it is says, Israel has say, done this, Hamas has done this. Yeah, when you say authoritative, what does that mean? They don't have any authority here. They, they have authority to like make statements. No, authoritative in understanding the laws and how to investigate them. Yeah, but like, what's the end result of the UN slapping Hamas on the wrist? Also, the Goldstein report, um, hold on. I mean, UN, UN investigations can um, form the basis of prosecutions in the International Criminal Court mm-hmm. if you can uh, manage to extradite people uh, for, for trial at the Hague, for example. Um, Cold stone. Which, so so just just quickly, because I want to take a bit of a middle ground, because I, I, otherwise we're going to end up looping. Um, okay, so broadly speaking, <laughs> the UN serves a couple of... Um, purposes it can be a meeting point and we saw this uh with kind of other ceasefires and uh kind of resolutions to conflicts where it becomes essentially a neutral ground in the case of the israel-palestine conflict or israel's existence itself um that's a bit more of a harder push because israel has been roundly denounced in the un for multiple years so much so there's a joke about the fact it's kind of the international uh place of just bitching at each other, essentially. It, it doesn't have much <laughs> meaning. The The UN has a, a kind of secondary meaning uh, use to it, which is the pooling of military resources and decisions for things like the use of certain weapons, what shouldn't be developed, the risks of certain developmentals, like one of the big ones at the moment is like uh, things like swarm warfare and artificial intelligence in warfare. Like the UN's a big leader in the research in those areas, but yes, Wait, what does that, hold on, what does that mean? The UN is a big leader in research. Are you telling me the UN has its like own institutions, its own schools, its own? It funds research. It it, it funds and calls military um, kind of uh, documentation. So like for instance, a lot of American generals will contribute to papers with other uh, countries like say South Korea. Okay. When they're yeah, kind of but it's supported by like top legal scholars in the world when it yeah. comes to so, these these issues. Well, supported and yeah. contested. Not every single thing the UN says is like a supported statement, especially around Israel Palestine. There's a lot of contested stuff here. It's, I, like, yeah, but it's important to see what the content, uh, the contestion, the con- contestations, what what the what <laughs> what's being contested. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a difficult one with Israel Palestine. I agree with uh, Destiny on this because as opposed to other nations where there's a bit more balance. Um, a lot of people, so for instance, you'll find that Britain often abstains or has in the past voted against Israel in UN resolutions or condemnations because Britain's concerns are with kind of um, our oil based counterparts, uh, to put it politely. Um, so there's a lot of politicking, particularly around Israel in this region. So, whereas I think the UN can have huge effects with other nations. I'm not sure whether that's the same for Israel because of how they've been treated within it. Um, though I do agree, like, the compiling of information and data uh, for use in kind of post-conflict trials or uh, prosecutions is really, like, it's something the UN has shown that it is valuable for. But as with all things, it depends on the conflict, it depends on the winners and the losers. And it's things like Rwanda, for example, like when you've got UN troops in Rwanda, obviously there are atrocities committed there, but because of the nature of how Rwanda ended up dealing with its post-Civil War period or post-massacre period, um, it didn't persecute, it, it didn't prosecute in the same way that we'd see, you know, post-Nuremberg for an extreme example. Um, but yeah, I mean, ultimately, like the claims of war crimes are not just hand wavy things. They can have, um, long-standing impacts so right now we're seeing in the u.s for the first time kind of the vote turn against israel um at least within the populists uh we're also seeing that in europe um even amongst right-wing voters there's an awful lot of sympathy for palestine and that does impact how uh politicians and governments are going to um introduce that issue to the voting demographics because they want to win elections and a lot of this is to do with where that money and lobbying and support comes from. So 
in the long term, having a load of accusations of humanitarian and war crimes against you could have an impact to Israel's support, yes. It's not just as simple as a hand wave. Just a longer case uh, study, basically. Does anyone disagree with that? Like, does anyone think it really is pointless to, like, put anything as war crimes? Because Destiny, I've seen you say this a few times. Well, I mean, I, I feel I, like, I feel like the UN crime. declaration is kind of pointless. I feel like what people probably don't like are the underlying things. I think that's probably the big thing. Maybe a UN declaration can matter in certain circumstances, but for the most part, I think people are going to be upset. Like when people talk about like the idea of like shooting and killing a reporter, I don't think people care that it was like a war crime or not. They care that the underlying action was really, really, really bad. They're not waiting for like a UN resolution on that to feel horrible about it. You know, that that's my guess. It's wrong. not about feeling horrible. It's about seeing accountability, right? Which is where like the yeah, but war crimes don't do this. There's no no accountability from the UN in this region for this shit. For not, no, for not, in, not from the UN, but from the ICC, there can be. Uh, potentially. Um, what has the ICC the done to ICC. hold anybody in this region accountable for anything? In that in that region, I'm not sure. I don't think. Because I don't. I'm not aware of anything. Maybe there um, is. As but... far as as far as I know, there's currently an investigation going in into the uh, killing of um, Shireen Abu Akleh at the ICC. I don't know what the um, uh, what the outcome of uh, that will be. Um, I imagine there's been other investigations by the ICC into Palestine, Israel. I can't imagine why they've. Sure, but I just I don't think anything like I don't think they can do anything okay. to hold them accountable. Like Israel's not even part of the ICC. I don't know what like the ICC can do at a third party investigation, which apparently at this point just means asking Hamas about what happened. Um, but at that point, I, mean, like, I don't think I don't think that like the ICC like, can hold them accountable for anything. I mean, <laughs> nobody's like part of the ICC. Coney wasn't part of the ICC. He still stood, stood trial in the Hague for war crimes, right? I thought the right. ICC has members, has signatories to it. Is that not true? The uh, International Co uh, Criminal Court. It's like I'm pretty sure. Like, I thought I saw a map where like the United States and the uh, and Israel, I believe, are not signatories or whatever. Too. I mean, if you're talking about signatories to the Rome Statute. Uh yes. Yeah, that's oh, what you crazy. About. Yeah, when I look in the Middle East, it seems like nobody here really, <laughs> nobody here is really, except for fucking Jordan, nobody's yeah. really a signatory to this. So then, yeah, so. Cool. Did the Lord's Resistance Army sign the Rome Statute? I don't fucking know. They didn't. <laughs> I don't even know if they, I don't know if, oh, they definitely existed when it was signed. But, <clears throat> I, 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 I find it very difficult to believe that they would have signed the Rome Statute. Um, but Coney's still tried in the ICC, right? Um, I don't even know if that's true. I have no idea what that even... Was that true? Yeah, Coney, uh, Coney cases, Joseph Coney. Let's see. <clears throat> Coney is a Ugandan militant who founded the Lord's Resistance Army. Oh, He's yeah. from Uganda. Yeah. Kenya, Uganda. That's this country here. It's con Uganda is a signatory to the Rome Statute. So that makes sense. Oh, it is? Yeah. Ah, fair enough. Yeah. Okay. So then they even, be the even best case scenario for your ICC example, like if do you, I, I think Israel wouldn't care about giving up a few leaders in exchange for like the fact that they would win. They, well, I mean, they I like, like, I'm not I, so. I, I will fully admit, right, that I don't know, um, like, everything about the internal workings of the ICC, right? I don't think any of us fucking do. Um, but, like, I'm not the I'm not the only person suggesting that the ICC could, uh, could potentially intervene in the case of Israel-Palestine, right? Not only are they in, not only are they investigating the case of Shireen Abu Akhla, um, but I, uh, I saw something yesterday, I think, about South Africa adding themselves to four other, uh, it, it was either four total with South Africa or four other nations, uh, that are calling on the ICC to open a criminal investigation into Netanyahu. So, like, like whole ass fucking nations. Hey, would they, would, think would that they open the up ICC one into Iran, into Pakistan, into Hamas, into Hezbollah? Like, there, there would have to be some level of consistency here. Like, what are, what are their thoughts on October 7th? Like, 
um, what is the UN stance on October? Hey, I would 7th? like I would like to see absolutely anybody who's fucking committed war crimes be uh, uh, be held accountable, right? Um, we're just we're yeah, just not talking about those people. Is what is it? Here, like, well, here, let's, these groups don't skipping... think these things are like an illegal or bad thing to do in yeah, war. These are, there's a standard tactic. Let's skip right, forward, let's skip, skip forward to all of this, okay? Because none of this matters. Fuck the war crime shit, okay? What? So obviously we want a true or ceasefire, or whatever. What should Israel do right now? For the people that are calling for a ceasefire, let's say they do a ceasefire. What's the next step? I mean, they're already doing a ceasefire, right? It's we a temporary one for hostage releases for days. Yeah, what, what's, but what's after the ceasefire? Four days. Um, I would hope they use the period of the ceasefire to enter, to, uh, enter into some kind of negotiations. Honestly. Yeah, but I'm asking what comes after? What are they? Because they want Hamas gone. Hamas is not going to leave the uh -huh. Gaza Strip. What happens next? The next step is that you, you lift the blockade. You... You secure the borders of Israel. You start to work on the two-state solution. You bring the people to the side of Israel. Let them see that, okay, Israel's now opened up the borders. Our economy is no longer crippled. Our government's allowed to actually work. You work with the PNA to help, again, generate support for the people to support the PNA instead of the um, instead of Hamas. And you start the long, difficult road to actually giving Palestine statehood, creating good relations between Israel and Palestine, and turning the people against Hamas. You, you can't fight an insurgency like That's this by just going Hamas, to war. Though. Wait, so the uh, sub one, neither, what, neither does the fucking war in time, Iraq or Afghanistan. We we learned Killing that them you not just kill women. I, mean, I mean, I mean, what happened to the Taliban? Achieve this end. <laughs> like they're not they're not exactly uh, doing terribly right now, are they? The Taliban. No, they went to their hidey holes, and then the moment that we couldn't continue to do the protracted nation building, which Pakistan, again, Reuters, this, this hard. Yeah, no shit. You know what I fucking mean. And now reading this fucking Reuters article where experts are saying, or I'm sorry, this one's Haaretz. The Reuters article where experts are saying that Israel's looking at an I Afghanistan Iraq insurgency situation. So yeah, we've seen this time and time again. And we learned in Mosul, we learned in other places in Iraq and Afghanistan that if you want to actually successfully fight mm -hmm. these people, you need to bring the people to your side. And you are not going to do that when you have a crippling blockade that is a giant human rights violation that is detrimental well, hey, there to is the another existence way. of the people in Gaza. Well, the blockade would have helped in Afghanistan for way. sure, because even if they came back from their hidey hole, there would have been a blockade to go through. Okay, wait, yeah, can we also what? argue, so, hold on, we're, you're picking examples where this worked, okay? Couldn't we find the total opposite examples? Like, should we have played the appeasement game with Hitler, or that didn't seem to work? Should we play the no, appeasement game No, we're not talking with, about appeasement. We're not talking appeasement. You are talking appeasement. You're talking about, because they did October 7th, now well, we're going to relieve the blockade. Appeasement was no, 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 if you want to go ahead, should we have done appeasement with Al-Qaeda? Should we do an appeasement with ISIS? Like, are these groups that we have? We're we not just talking them about appeasement. We're not talking about appeasement. We're talking about working with the people. Are you saying that, no, we actually, because this is what I want to talk about when she brought up her Alabama example and you turned it to the LA police one. Like, uh, to what degree are you willing to damage the lives of 2.3 million people? Like, what's the number of people that have to be dying per year for you to say, no, this is okay? I'm not give sure, me a but when 70% of them are... No, no, give me a number, because you tried to push me to a number of how many people okay, dying. what's the number? Okay what number. are you give asking? Give me a number. How many people a year need to die for you to say, okay, blockading and doing what we've done to Gaza, what Israel has done to Gaza for the last 17 years, 2.3 million people, 1.5 at the start of the blockade, for all those years doing what we're doing to them, how many people have to no longer be dying a year for that to be justified? How many Give people, me a number. How many people have to, are you asking, what is like the yearly deaths? Is this during combat operations or not combat operations? No, no, non-combat operations, civilian deaths. How many people have to die, Israeli civilians, how many people have to die a year? And then you want to cut that number to a certain point and say, okay, this is justified to damage the lives of 2.3 million people to an excessive degree. How many Israeli citizens need to die for how many Palestinian? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to follow this question. You're asking me- 2.3 million people under the blockade and the effect the blockade has had on them, right? Yes. Okay. You understand that's horrible and it's been significantly detrimental to the people of Gaza, right? Uh, to some extent it must be, yeah. To an excessive extent. I don't know if so that's I'm true, but to some you, extent it clearly is, yes. So let's say, let's say um, before the blockade, 70 Israeli civilians a year are dying, right? We'll say after the blockade, how many of those civilians, like how much do you want to see that number go down to justify? Is it all 70? It's like, fuck, if we don't lose 70 I don't think I would year, ever measure this it. in civilian deaths. I would measure it in what's going into the Gaza Strip. No, but that's what exactly Israel has done. They've said that, hey, we've cut down on the suicide bombings. Hey, we've, uh, you know, the uh, the rocket attacks, people aren't able to get as many rockets in, so we're not having as many deaths. Yeah, but that's the blockade, the, the blockade the is blockade. No, the blockade is not, we need to bring this number down to this. The blockade is- And it's also, is, we need to de-legitimize the, the government of, of Gaza. No, 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 no. 
the blockade is that call me wrong um, on that please i i would love you to do that the the primary justification for the blockade is that materials can enter the gaza strip that are used to attack israel that's the goal of the blockade is to inhibit those things coming into the gaza strip that's the point no no it was to delegitimize hamas after their election and it was to provide security there were two it's twofold it's why was it to delegitimize hamas because they no longer wanted hamas to run it because why but the point is the point is it's wait, no no wait why didn't they want hamas to run it I, i'm sorry do we want to go through the history again it was because hamas concept. was a f- terrorist organization that was attacking israel wait hold on 2014 2014 <clears throat> did hamas agree to um to uh renounce violence did hamas agree to acknowledge israel as a state did hamas agree to uh, operate under all other previous uh negotiated uh accords with israel uh i'd have to check but wasn't this the, the answer same? is yes what, hold on was this the same year in 2014 when hamas said the plo doesn't speak for us the plo can't represent any of our things and nope. we're negotiating a totally nope. separate entity are you sure 100 nope. sure about that 100 percent positive oh fuck i gotta fight i literally just read this earlier today Was this before or after Protective Edge? This was before Protective Edge. So prior to Protective Edge, in the from 2013 to 2014, when Israel had reengaged with peace talks, this is around when the carry um, there were the six carry uh, things. I forget what they were called. The carry there was something, but there were six points that carry was doing to try to have peace talks between Israel and Palestine. And at this time, the Palestinian government, Hamas, wait, is this working? Oh, okay, uh, the Palestinian government explicitly stated that. They were rejecting Kerry's announcements and that Mahmoud Abbas had no legitimacy to negotiate in the name of the entire Palestinian people. What year was this? Uh, I think this was in 2013. Okay, in 2014, they formed the unity government with the Fatah and they agreed to everything I just said. Was this- I'll give you the source on it. Give me two seconds. Sure, okay. Oh my! Half my internet should just died. Nice. Okay. Mine did. Mine went nuts too. I don't Based. know what's going on. Wait, is anybody else alive in this call, or are we just in our own private? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm no, fine. I'm just. I'm just giving you time. I'm just oh, giving no, you time. Yeah. Oh no! Yeah. That was check. fucking weird. We're just like. I've got that Bay Area internet. I'm fine. To be fair, it's for once the uh, Brit longer internet that's not dropping out in quite place. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. Take take your fucking time. I don't. I don't mind you check, um, checking shit. My internet's like fucking great, like ninety nine percent of the time, and then I'll just have a day where it's just it it just won't fucking connect. That's what you get with the British internet. Do, 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 do. I literally four hundred five. Well, while you're looking that up, like the blockade thing, turning the blockade down would just like bolster Hamas because they would able be able to get like weapons in mass um, from Iran and from Hezbollah and from everybody. Uh, whereas now it's like slow and they can get a few where if they have like 50,000 rockets right now that were being handed to them by Iran, they can have a couple hundred thousand easy because nobody would be checking over the blockade. I'm posting this in the, the well, do we have a group chat? Hold on. Uh, yeah, you can just post it in the channel chat or in general. I'm yeah. posting it in general in this or just for my notes. Can you DM me? Yep. And also, again, like CP Livni came out and explicitly said, like these are both political and uh, and security related as far as their uh, as the blockade goes. And it was the the political part that made it an illegal blockade. But we can go down to that road another day. 
Hamas, Palestinian unity government will recognize Israel and condemn terrorism. <clears throat> Oh, archive I'll link, hold on. As well, so I can actually, actually have a look at it. Okay. Um. Uh, Viv, you're peeking a little bit on your mic. Oh. Sorry, my bad. I'll uh, move my fan. That's probably what it is. Mm -mm. Is that better? Uh, it's a bit more of a constant hum now. I fucking hate you. What is wrong with this Sorry. shit? There we go. Well, yeah, there we go. I muted my fucking self. I'm fixing it, Becky. I'm fucking fixing it, all right? Dead, <laughs> dead. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> There we go, I think. Yeah, that'll do. Okay. Uh. Isn't it fucking crazy how, like, air works? Okay, so <clears throat> this is showing that Hamas uh, formed a unity government with the PLO in 2014 and that yep. they were willing to recognize Israel and condemn terrorism. Is, was there anything else about like this unity government thing or how long did no, this the last point? The whole, the whole point, well, it, it, then the, uh, the Operation Brothers Keeper and Protective Edge happened. I need to spend, I just got to spend a week doing all the Gaza wars. Operation, what was Operation Brothers Keeper in response to? Operation Brothers Keeper was the three boys were kidnapped. Um, they go on a search and rescue mission, but uh, evidence comes out later that they already knew they were dead, but they still did the search and rescue mission anyway. And then there were retaliations for the way that the IDF behaved during that search and rescue mission. And then IDF used that as a precursor to go ahead and start Operation Protective Edge. Do you think that is there a chance that Hamas forming a unity government here might have just looked to be backstabbing the Palestinian Authority again? What about the time in 2008 where uh, people in, in Wait, Israel- Wait, I'm just asking about uh, this one. Is that possible? Say it again? Is it possible that Hamas is just forming unity governments with a plan to eventually like uh, basically backstab the Palestinian Authority? Sure, anything's possible. We have no evidence of that. <clears throat> Okay. Because again, we have, when, we have evidence that in 2008. Well, hold we on, not 2000, don't, jump, 2000. don't jump. Focus on this one area. One area. This 2014 unity and everything. I haven't heard this before. New area for me. So I'm just trying to figure this shit out. Okay. So mm -hmm. apparently Abbas himself verified this story. We can come out later. But apparently Hamas was planning a massive attack against Israel and a coup against the Palestinian Authority after they'd formed this unity government. I've not read a single thing about that. All right, I sent you the link on this. Yeah, that's in like mid 2014. If somebody has like a link to uh, Abbas confirming these separately, I guess I see like a statement he made down here, but or confirming this. Okay. Um, Is it okay? I'm going to, what I'm going to do is because, uh, because might have some info. I'll bring in Rafi and throw out Sam for a bit. Okay, wait, okay. are these both IDF I, people or? Oh, I'm um, leaving Rafi's IDF. Oh, okay. I'm going yeah, to, I have to go to Sam too because I need to go. On this. Yeah, I also have to go. Say that again. Fuck. I have to, I have to leave in like three, five minutes. I'll give you five minutes, okay? I've got Love no, you guys, be minutes. safe, have fun. Oh, my God. Rafi. You hear me? You good? You with me? Fucking knew it was Rafi. Fucking knew it. Didn't I say? <laughs> I don't know who Rafi is. 
<laughs> yeah. That should be fun. Am I audible? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, yep. we can hear you. Right, go ahead. So where are we at? Uh, Lycan, do you want to just give a quick recap? Very quick. Well, I'm... I, no, I'm uh, I'm reading this article. <laughs> so you could start wherever... Rafi, I assume, has been listening, so he can jump in wherever he wants. Sure. Uh, I, I was listening on Destiny's stream, but that seems to have gone down, at least on YouTube. Oh, we're on cake, baby. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I just want to say, Lycan, very quickly, the claims you were making about the Unity government, y you do realize that it fell apart after less than a month for Protective Edge, having nothing to do with Israel, right? And that it, it was mostly an internal politic between Hamas and Fatah that had to do with a lot of the internal politics of the Palestinian regimes. It also would have required elections within a few months, which obviously neither group ever wanted to do. Do you have a source on that? Uh, it, sorry, because everyone's playing the source game with me tonight, so I, w I would like to read on that since I haven't. Uh... I'm looking at, I mean, I guess go, I would go on Wikipedia first. They'll have the basic rundown. I'm looking, I was looking at the Hebrew Wikipedia, but I also, I was in the military at this time. Uh, I but, mean, if we're needing sources uh, constantly. want, we can go through like the. If we're needing sources constantly and uh, just, just, just in uh, spending half an hour reading a fucking article every time a point's brought up, like, I, I don't know. What, are, there, are there not contentions I mean, that broadly, you guys have that I, I, I you actually source... know something about, rather than having yes, to look I, up I, I wouldn't personally source to Wikipedia for like uh, more detailed claims, but uh, you can just look at the specific dates of the Unity government, how long it lasted for, and then also very importantly the specific requirements that the Unity government imposed on both Hamas and Fatah, which would have been elections following several months of working together. This also wasn't the first time that there were unity governments formed. I think there was another one formed maybe in 2012, if I remember correctly. I think I read that this is a third unity government, so that might be the case. Okay, yeah. So this is something that has to do with a lot of the internal politics and them competing with each other for supremacy in terms of representing the right to represent the Palestinian people. It's hotly contested. Obviously, both parties are actually quite unpopular, generally speaking. Uh, but this broadly has to do with their own internal management of Palestinian politics rather than uh, through opposition to Israel. But generally they try to one-up each other through opposition to Israel because that does carry some weight with the Palestinian populace. So yeah, because I think I'm Abbas at and PLO have pop pop popularity problems as well. That's one of the reasons why he doesn't want to call elections again, right? As I'm pretty sure he thinks his leadership would be threatened. Yeah, so, so basically we see two, uh, Hamas is generally quite popular with regards to their management of the uh, conflict with us, with Israel. Sure. Whereas Fatah is very unpopular both in re with regards to their management of the conflict and with regards to their civil management. Sure. Am I understanding that Hamas is Hamas is okay with Hamas is I thought Hamas's civil right? management was rated very lowly as well. Wasn't it like 12% approve of like their- uh, not, not nearly, yeah, not nearly as lowly as Fatah though. Cause really? Just because Fatah has both aspects going against them. Hamas, okay. I, I think uh, from the polls I see, Hamas, it's been more recently that the civil management has gone down because of their, the repeated bombings that have resulted from their actions, which generally makes people pretty upset. Uh, yeah, right now, they're in an all-time low. I mean, we have we have record high numbers of Palestinians informing on Hamas at the moment. I like, was going to uh, say, by, do you by, not uh, think that, that could have changed significantly since uh, since October seventh? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm saying absolutely. Right, now, it's a record high of people informing, calling. We're getting a lot of information from Palestinian civilians in Gaza right now because of how deeply unpopular Hamas has become. Okay, listen, I love you guys. It's been fun. Um, yeah. I'll be back later tomorrow, actually. Okay, be careful. All right. Love like, you, buddy. Like it, I love you, too. Be careful. Say us 100%. All right, I love you guys. I'll be back uh, tomorrow. We're going to do this note. <clears throat> I need my voice to come back, okay? We're going to do note condensation. Condensation? Condensing. Or I think we just be condensing, yeah. And then I think we're going to go through all of the modern Gaza Wars. We will do that. But I just need my voice to come back so I can read again, okay?